How y'all doing? I, 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 I'm happy to be here tonight, just like I had good sense. I, my name is Buddy Robinson, and, and, and it's good to be back, be back home. I, I'm from White County, Tennessee. Anybody know where White County is? If y'all want to know where White County is, you look at a map of Tennessee, and where there ain't nothing, that's White County. That's, that's, that's where I was born, right, right in the middle of nothing. And, and we were so far back up in the hills and the hollers, you, you had to ride the buggy about three days just to get to the train station. That's how far we was up there. And we was up there, there won't no church house, won't no school house, such a, such a thing won't even thought about. And so it's good, good to be back home a little bit, and, and I, I'm glad to be back in, in Tennessee. And... Good, good to be able to preach, preach to y'all tonight. And y'all might have might have noticed I I I stutter. I stutter, and that's just all, all there is to it. That that's just the way God made me, and and, and it ain't gonna get no better. It might get worse for for all that. I I remember when when I first started out preaching, I stutter so bad. I, I I'd see a feller out in the field. I didn't know where I was going, and and I'd have to come come up to him. I say. And he he start naming town, and when he got to the town I was going to, I I nod my head, and he said, "Are, are you going to the to, to to the jailhouse?" I said, "No." He said, "Going to the asylum?" I reckon he figured I would be in there. I don't know, you know. But I shake my head. He said, "Going to the church house?" I shake my head, and when when he started naming churches, and when he got to the church I was going to, I, I nod my head. He'd tell me how to get there, and I, I'd go on. But 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 anyhow, I, I stuttered. And I'm gonna tell you something else about stuttering. Stuttering will get you in, in a whole lot of trouble. That's how I got married. <laughs> I, 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 I was out in, down in Texas with my sweetheart, Miss Sally Hopper, and we was on the front porch swing, you know, we were swinging away. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about being on the front porch swing with your sweetheart. And, and, and some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyhow, we were swinging along there, and, and, and I said, Miss Sally, will you mama, 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 And she said, Buddy, I'll marry you right now. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Miss Sally, will you make me a cake? <laughs> well, once she got that idea that about getting married in her head, then there won't no getting it out, and we got married. And I'm glad we did. I'm glad we did. We got two little girls now, Sally and, and Ruby. And God, God's been good. But you got your Bibles, you turn to Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. 
five. That, that's my life chapter. It's just like God wrote it right for me. And, and I, I know we're talking about the, the, the kingdom of uh, Jesus Christ, but, but bless God, if the Bible don't mean something to you yourself, then what you're reading it for. That's what God wrote it for, so it's going to tell you being something to you for yourself. You know, we get them fellas that study in the Bible all the time, and they got it studied so they squeeze it all right dry, and then they hand it out to you, you know, like like a like a cracker or something. And but but it, it ain't dry, it ain't dry. And if your life's dry tonight, I hope we get taken care of that for for we're all done tonight too. But you got your Bible, you turn to Isaiah chapter thirty-five. Isaiah chapter thirty-five. This is a wilderness and the solitary place. See right there, talking about me, because that's where I was born <laughs> in the wilderness and the solitary place. I done told you we were so far up there in the hills and the holler. Well, the sun on its own from about 10 o'clock in the morning to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We were way on back up in that. And we didn't we didn't have nothing. We I lived in an old log cabin that, that just had some, some, some skin stretched across a, across a window there. Didn't have no glass in the window. Just had skin in there. And we didn't even have no chimney. Just had a hole in us. Hole in us. Roof the smoke to get out when it felt like it, you know, just kind of on like that. And 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 that's how I grew up. It was a wilderness and a solitary place. And, and it won't just a wilderness because there won't nothing. And there won't now. There won't. I ain't, I ain't lying to you about that now. And but it is a wilderness in our heart. It is a wilderness in our heart because cause, cause there won't no churches. No, no, they, they, we didn't even have a preacher come through preach to us. And, and it, it, was a, it was a bad place. Folk didn't get married. They just took up one another. And they got tired of somebody. They, they took up somebody else. And it is a bad place to be from. And and, and that's where I grew up. That's where I grew up. And first time I heard about Jesus Christ, I that, that want a swear word. Uh, I was about eight years old. And I had a friend, my one friend. And he comes to me and, and, and he said, buddy, why don't you come on, uh, come on, come on to my house and, and stay for a little bit. And, and I asked my mama, she said, be all right. And, and so I went on in there and, and I got to his house and I, I found out why we didn't have nothing. They had it all. <laughs> I, I mean, they had a pretty white clapboard side of the house and they had a parlor and they, and they had, well, we were going to go in there to eat. And I sat down and I'd never seen so much food in my whole life. <laughs> Now, some of you, if you ain't had dinner, you just gonna have to hold on, cause I'm gonna tell you what we 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 they, we were having we were having they had they had ham and and they had they had they had some beef down there and they had some possum down there and had black eyed peas and cornbread and they had they had biscuits about like that you know about like that and and, and let, let me say they had corn and 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 and, 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 they, had, and they had some okra all, all fried up there and squash all fried up there and I, we had everything I never seen so much food in one place my whole my whole life. And I'm ready to dig in. Call that my house. You better get it while it's getting good, or you didn't get nothing. Well, I sat down there and and, and I was ready to dig in. It, and the daddy said, "Let's pray." I ain't never heard of such a thing. Praying for you, hey. And Mama said, y "You do what they do." So I. I bowed my head, they bowed their head, I bowed my head. And they, they closed their eyes and I just closed one eye. Because <laughs> I thought somebody was going to steal all that food over I had an eye closed, you know, and I was going to catch them. And the daddy prayed and, 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 and we ate and I ate till I was about to butt. I mean, I ate everything I could get my hand on. And, and I told them, I said, I'm about the best. And they said, well, we got some cake. I said, well, give me the cake and stand out the way. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> But anyhow, we, we got done eating and went on into the to, to the parlor there, and we told stories and we played games and we, we just had the best time. And I never had so much fun in my life. I didn't know folks that had, had so much fun without getting drunk. At my house, everybody was about drunk as a skunk all the time. My daddy made corn whiskey. Sent many a man down the room. He drunk it himself. He drunk himself right in the ground. My my daddy, he, he's a mean man. Thing I remember about my daddy is he was trying to kill his best friend. He had had a pistol. He he's gonna kill him, and, and the man had had hold a hammer on the pistol. Keep my daddy from from killing him dead. My my dad, he he beat us all the time, knocked my mama around, and, and my he 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 soon kill your ass looking. And that that that's my daddy. How I grew up with him. And 
we went on like that and and, and here i was at this friend's house and and I, I i remember just a little old boy i remember thinking oh oh my family be like this oh my family be like this i i don't, I don't have a I have a good family i just a little old boy and and then it got time to go go to bed and me and my friend we got in a big old feather bed you know you kind of sink down into it like you're on a cloud you know it comes in on you like that that side and and we've gonna stay up all night, you know, tell scary stories like what little boys do. Y'all, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. We well, gonna do that, and, and well, sir, the daddy come in there, and he said, "Let's let's pray." And he prayed with his boy, and and, and he said, "Buddy, I own to pray for you." Nobody ever prayed with me before. Well, my mama did, but if he was afraid to tell anybody, cause my daddy would have beat him. And he said, Lord, you help Buddy Robinson to be a good boy. And I remember, I remember thinking, I, I, I'm going I'm to be a good boy. And I was, too. I the best boy you ever seen in your life. You just ask me. <laughs> I, I tell you right now. I the best boy in the whole wide, wide world for about two days. <laughs> That's about all I could saying. <laughs> You trying to be good on your own, you can't do it. You, you, you can't be good without Jesus Christ. You, you can't. Some folks say they're gonna they're gonna work their way, be good enough to get into heaven. No, who are you kidding me? But I, I, I thought well, I'm gonna be good, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it on my own, and you, nobody can. Well, anyhow, I, I got back home, and, and, and things were going along there, and 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 when I was ten years old, my, my daddy died. Everybody in the whole county said he died of meanness, and he might have been. But, but he died, and, and we were so poor, we didn't even have the money to put, put him in the ground. We had to go to the neighbor get some pine boards to, to build a box to put him in, and we got Daddy in the ground. And Mama got all up together. There's there, 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 there nine of us. And we hit out, got a fella to haul us to the train station, and we got a train down, down to Texas or from up here. And we got down there, and... And won't none of us could read nor write now. And we got a job with a shower cropping with a fella down there. And his idea of shower cropping was to take his shower and our shower too. He cheated us out of everything we had. And we got in with another fella. And, and uh, he had a great old big ranch down there. About, about 20,000 acres down there. He had cattle about far as you could see. He had horses. He had money. He had everything. And he was a good, he, he, was, he was a good, good, good sinner. You know what I'm talking about, a, a good sinner? He didn't sin a whole lot now, he just sin just a little bit. Yeah, he didn't do a whole lot, lot of drinking now, he just did a little bit of drinking. He, he didn't do a whole lot of gambling, he won't go lose his whole ranch down there. Gambling, he just gambled a little bit. You know? He didn't do a whole lot of sinning, he just sinned just a little bit. And, and then it was only them good sins, you know, them good kind of sins we do, we think they're, they're all right, you know, this will be all right. He did a little old lie. Yeah, just a, he's a good sinner. And I seen all of, all he had, and I said, well, I'm going to be a good sinner. <laughs> I'm be a good sinner as him. And I set myself to be the best sinner I could be. <laughs> and I was good at it, too. <laughs> well, sir, I got to be 18 years old. I don't know how I made it to 18 <laughs> without getting killed, but anyhow, I got to be 18 years old. And, and there's an old, old camp meeting down the road. And my mama said, Betty, I think you ought to go to that camp meeting. I'm going to tell y'all something about my, my, my mama. My daddy, he was, he was mean. But my, my mama, she was tough. I mean, she'd jerk a knot in your head right now. I remember this one time we was we were out on the wagon, and, and these two fellas come up to, to us, and they were going to rob us. They were going to take what we had, and we didn't have much. Daddy, he'd run off from work. And Mama seen him come in, and she got hold of the shotgun, got that old, old shotgun all, all loaded up there, and she sat there with the shotgun across her knees, and them fellas come up, and she said, What y'all want? And they decided they didn't want nothing <laughs> by, by that time, and they, they hit that. But she just killed it. She didn't mess with my mama. She said, Buddy, I believe it'd be good for you to go to that camp meeting. I said, Mama, Mama, I ain't going to no camp meeting. She said, Buddy, I, I, I think you ought to go to that camp meeting. I said, Mama. Mama, I ain't, I ain't going to no camp meeting now. She said, Betty, you you going to go to that camp meeting. I said, Mama, I believe I will. <laughs> and and I, I got my best bib overhauled on and a 
got my best flannel shirt on that I had, and before I went, I went to my brother's room, and he had one of them Navy Colt 45 revolvers, you know, about 10 feet long and weighed about 500 pounds, and, and I put that down in the deep pocket of my bib overhaul. About like them overhauls you got right there. So if I only had one gallon, you got both gallons up there. You're doing better than me. But I got, I got put that down in the deep pocket of my bib overhaul. You ain't got a pistol in your overhaul tonight, do you? I hope not. But I put that down in my deep pocket of my bib overhaul, and I, I got myself a deck of cards, and I put that down in the other pocket. And I said, I'm going to find myself some fellas whose mamas made them go, and we're going to have ourselves a good time. Well, sir, I, I got down there, and I, and I was a little bit late, because I've been arguing mama about that thing. And I got down there, and I, I was hurt, because they won't nobody shoot the place up with. They won't nobody play cards with. And they want nothing to do but go to the, to the meeting. Well, I won't go and go by, by myself. And I found myself a little red-haired girl. I'm partial to girls with red heart. <laughs> and I found myself a little red-haired girl, and I knowed her, her from town. She's a good dancer. And we was going to do some sparking. We was going to do some courting. And I, I was going to have myself a good time. Now, I won't, I won't shy about girls now. <laughs> it just took me a long time to ask them out, you know, call it stutter. That's the thing about stuttering. It just takes you about, about twice as long to say half as much as anybody else, you know. Then anyhow, I asked that girl, and we were sitting way on, way on back in the back, way on back there, way, just going back there a long ways. And, and it, was, it was a meeting sort of like this one where the brush arbor, except they folks drove their carriages in on the side, and they, and they, they had the horses around, and they had some bitches and on the sawdust on the floor and so on. Well, I got in there, and, and we were sitting back on the back, and this little old, little old, just a little old, Little old skinny, this little old skinny dried up preacher. He come up there. I mean, he looked look like a strong wind would just, just blow him away. Well, he got up there and he got to preaching and I got to sweat. He started talking about hell like it's a real place and it is a real place. He started talking about hell like if you ain't got Jesus Christ in your heart, you're going to go there. And if you ain't got Jesus in your heart, you're going to go there. Ain't, ain't no two ways about that. And he got to talking about that, and, and, and he got to talking about all uh, sin, and, and I got to thinking, that, that fella, that fella, he, he'd, been, he'd been talking to my mama. I mean, he, he had my number. And he, he got talking about hell, and I got to hold on. I got thinking, you might go right now. I start looking down. Well, he got down to an altar call and folks was coming and he walked down the aisle right where I was. He looked me right square in the eye. He said, he said, I believe there's somebody back here need to know the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior. And I grabbed hold, boy. I thought, this is it. I'm gone now. <laughs> I thought I was going right straight down. And, and he come on back there and I got to thinking about that thing. I got to thinking now, I, I, I ought to go down there. I ought to ask Jesus Christ in my heart. And soon as I done that, soon as I done that, old Satan, he come up there, he said, buddy, buddy, they don't want you now because you ain't got nothing. See, he's trying to make me think folks want you to be a Christian because you got something. <laughs> there ain't nothing we got to God. There ain't nothing but dirt to, to God. <laughs> but anyhow, he said, you ain't got, got nothing. And I got to study on that thing. I said, now that, that preacher said, ye are of your father the devil. And if you my daddy, who give me all that nothing? You did. And I come out there and I start down that aisle. I thought that aisle was about 2,000 miles long. I mean, I didn't ever think I'd get down to the end of it. And I was coming down there, and, and old Satan, he grabbed hold of my bib overhauls. He said, buddy, buddy, they don't want you. You got an old pistol in your pocket, and it felt big as a house. I mean, I thought everybody thought I was going to go down there and kill a preacher dead. And that wouldn't have been the first time down there in Texas, neither. Well, sir, here, here, I said, wait a minute, who gave me that pistol? You did. And I kept right on coming. He said, buddy, you got an old deck of cards in your pocket. You too bad to be safe. Ain't, ain't nobody too bad to be safe. And I said, who gave me that deck of cards? You, you did. And I come on down there, and I found faithful God Almighty and the thought up there, and I, and I, I asked Lord, to forgive me and confess my sin, and it's right here. It's right here. This is what God wants to do. Verse 3, 
And, and I lay at 35, strengthen ye the weak hand and confirm the feeble knee. My hands were right weak where I've been holding on to the, to the bench in front of me. My knees were right weak where I've been, been knocking together. I was scared to death I was going, going to go to hell. So confirm the feeble knee. Say to them they're fearful heart. I told you I was scared to death. Be, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. That's what God done for me that night. He come, he saved me. That's what God wants to do for you. If you ain't got him in your heart, he wants to come save you. Well, sir, they, they, they was having a testimony meeting that night. And and folks was all lined up there after the meeting was all over there. And and, and I, I was thinking to myself, I, why did God want to save a fellow like me? I, I can't have talk. I ain't hardly got no sense. I ain't got no money. But God said, come, and I come on. Well, sir, them folks was all lined up along there, and, 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 and they was pretty folks. I mean, them, them women, they had them dresses on, went out behind them about 15, 20 miles out on out there, you know, them old long dresses. And and, and the men had them suits on them. Y'all like my suit? So I give me this suit. He said, buddy, God told me to give you a suit. What size do you wear? I said, just give me the suit. God knows what size I wear. And, and I think God done all right. But it had, I, them men, men had them suits on them. And women, they had them hats on their head. Them women did. They looked like somebody shot two buzzards with a 12 gauge. You know, had them feathers out everywhere, sticking out everywhere. And they, and they could talk. They could talk so pretty. I mean, their, their, tongue, their tongue was like silver. My tongue was kind of like rubber bouncing around in my head, you know, like that. And... and and, and they could talk so pretty, and, and, and I was the last light, one. And I got up there, and, and, and it got me my turn, and, and everybody said that pretty thing, and, 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 and that was my turn, and, and, and here I was, I was getting up there, and, and y'all think I said her bad now? Let me, let me tell you, I was real bad then. And I got up there, and I said, I said, I thought I'm gonna get a running start at this thing, and I step back just a little bit, and I, <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe I'd better sneak up on it. <laughs> I kind of eased up there. Give him a testimony. Are you all right back there, ma'am? I'm sorry. I give him a testimony, but it all come out at the same time, you know, just kind of in a rest like that. And I was just a happy ha have Jesus in my heart, and I wanted to tell everybody about it. And, and it just come out like that. And, and that night I, I got done, I I went back to, to my wagon. I was sleeping underneath my wagon. And I look up at the star. I remember it right now. And I asked God something some of you ain't never asked God. And I was just a little old baby Christian. I mean, I was, I was just about baby as you could get. And I look up at the star. And I, I said, God, God, what you want me to do? Some of you ain't never once in your life asked God what he wants you to do. I'm sorry for you. It don't take much. He said, God, what you want me to do? And I said, God, what you want me to do? He said, buddy, don't you preach? <laughs> and I done just like all of us. I said, I can't do that. <laughs> we ask God what he wants us to do. He tells us, <laughs> and we say, well, I can't, I can't do that. Like like God don't know. <laughs> I said, I can't do that. I got, I got this old lisp. I got this old stutter. I, I can't do that. God said, buddy, I know you. I know you got that lisp. I know you got that stutter. I give it to you. I know the end from the beginning. I, I know you for you formed me in your mama's womb. I, I know all about that. I know you got that. I said, God, I, I, I can't even read. I haven't been in school a day in my life. I don't know how to read. How am I supposed to be a preacher? I can't read, read the Bible. 
So I said, buddy, I can't help you learn how to read. And I remember I started in Matthew chapter 1, and I, I, I'd get done with my chores, and, and, and I'd lay out under the moonlight there, and I, I'd found it out. I'd found out one word at the time, and, I, I, and, I, and I, I'd, sometimes I'd just pray the word just jump out at me. I wanted to read the Bible so bad, and I, I didn't know how. And, and by bless God, the time I got to the Sermon on the Mount, I was doing pretty good. And God helped me learn how to read. Well, sir, I had a preacher friend, and he'd come up to me one day. He said, buddy, God called you to preach, ain't he? I said, yes, sir, he had. He said, well, buddy, buddy, if God called you to preach, you need to get yourself a license. Everybody had a license back then, preacher. And I said, well, all right, let's, let's go get one. <laughs> like it was at the, at the store or something, you know. And, and I said, let's, let's go get one. And I went in there, and they had all them preachers in there, and they kind of looking down their nose at everybody, you know. And then, and... They got me up there and, and they said, uh, what's your name? And I said, my name is Reuben Robinson. That's, that's my real name. Y'all just call me Betty because Reuben too hard to say. Y'all just say, y'all my Betty or Uncle Bud be all right. And they asked me, but I didn't, I could hardly get my name out. And they said, Mr. Robinson, can, can you wait outside? Well, I know what it means. Somebody ask you wait outside, they gonna talk about you. <laughs> and they ain't gonna be good, neither. <laughs> well, I could hear them buzzing around like a bunch of bumblebees in there, and pretty soon my friend come out here had a piece of paper in his hand. I said, what's that? And he said, it's your license. I said, how'd you, how'd you get that? He said, they felt sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they thought I, I was crazy, and I might be, I don't know. They figured out I couldn't hurt nobody. <laughs> well, I didn't know no better. I just started preaching. I bought myself a $2 horse and a, and a $5 saddle. <laughs> Everybody said I paid too much for both of them. <laughs> sometime, sometime uh, nobody would ask me to their house. Uh, Stay tonight, and I have to sleep on the front porch. I always check the front porch of a church out before I come in here, Kate. I got to sleep on it. After about a year, they had another one of them meetings. Everybody got up, and they, they told what they'd done and about their church. It got to be my turn. They said, Mr. Robinson, why, why have you done? And I said, I, 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 ain't, I, ain't, I ain't done nothing. They kind of nodded their head about like, well, that's, that's what they thought. I said, I, I ain't done nothing but bless God, Jesus Christ, help us get 300 folks saved this first year. I'd preach every Sunday. I'd talk to everybody I could see about Jesus Christ. I don't know why God ever want to use a fellow like me. But if God can use me, what can God do with some of y'all? You ever think about that? Here's what God will do. Here, here. Look, you, you look right, right here. This is what God wants to do. This is what He done for me. Verse 5, the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Them, them folks, says, their eyes will just blind us in. God coming out, He open their eyes up, and, and, and they come in their heart, and, 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 and the ears of the deaf shall be unsighted. And them folks, they just, they just covered up their ears. To, they call, call our God. God unsighted their ears, and they come in their heart. And, and it says here, the, the lame man to leap in the heart. And, and them folks that sin, they just crippled their life all up. God coming there, and they took that sin, and they cleansed it out of their life. And, and, and and the tongue of the dumb, <laughs> that's me, <laughs> I'm the tongue of the dumb. <laughs> See, they in the wilderness, the waters break out and streams in the desert. Some of you got some wilderness in your life right, right now. God wants the water to break out some bad. He wants there to be streams in the desert. <coughs> some of y'all, you, you got the old dark riverbed. But that's what God wants to do, and that's what God done for me. But goes on down here. It says, it says that 
then the parched ground shall become a pool and a thirsty land spring to water and the habitation of the dragon for each lay shall be great with reeds and rushes. Well, things have gone along pretty good, but I have some dragons in my life. Like it says right here, ha habitation of dragons. You know what I'm talking about there? Dragons. I mean, the old dragon come in there and he lays down and he packs it down and he packs it down and he packs it down until you, you get an old hard, hard, dry place in your life like a callus on your hand. And folks looking from the outside, they see the grass going up with the reeds and the rushes, but God, he's looking down from the top and he said, there's, there's a dragon. There's a dragon. There's a little dragon. And that's what dragons make. They make little dragons. Maybe old dragon's lust, I don't know. Maybe, maybe old dragon's gossip, I, I don't know. I remember there was one lady I was preaching on gossip one time and <coughs> she'd come up after the meeting. She said, oh, Uncle Buddy, says, my feet is, is gossip. I want to lay my, my tongue at the altar. I said, well, ma'am, we only got about 25 feet up here. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, maybe your dragon's gossip. I don't know. Maybe you got another dragon. My, my dragon was, was the biggest dragon there is. Buddy, you done murder somebody? No, sir. That's not murder. It is bad, but it ain't the biggest dragon there is. Buddy, you done run around? No, sir. No, sir. I ain't gonna do that. Buddy, you done stole some money? No, sir. Buddy, you done? No. Well, Buddy, what, what you done? I said, I got the biggest dragon there is. Some of you, you got him too. Y'all, y'all tried him out like he's a pig. The biggest dragon there is is not trusting God. Not, not believing the promise of God right here. That's, that's the biggest dragon that they're going to be. And some of you got, got that dragon. And you think he's just a little old dragon, but he's the biggest dragon there is. You start calling God Almighty a little liar, and that's the biggest dragon you're going to get. And I had a dragon come in, and he was packing it down real hard. They, I, we was making so much money preaching, boy. I mean, I had the money roll, rolling in. I was making $4 a year for four years. <laughs> God had helped us get a little ranch down there in Texas, so we make a, make make the ends wave, wave at each other. They won't meet, but they, they could wave. <laughs> but I mean. well, we got down... We, get, we got down to, to nothing. I ain't talking about now we got down to just a little bit. I ain't talking about now we, we got down, down to nothing right now, but we know we have something coming in. I, I ain't talking about we got down to nothing, but, but we know somebody, they're they going to give us something. I, I mean, we didn't have nothing. I don't know if you ever hit just rock bottom solid nothing. You have so, so, so much messy, you got to look up just to see the bottom. I'm talking about messy. I didn't have no meeting. Won't no offering. Drought had, had killer grass, won't nothing for their stock to eat. The chickens won't lay no eggs. Cows won't give no milk. I mean, we didn't have messy. And I got mad with God because I thought I can't trust it. I said, God, you told me you're going to meet my need there and you ain't done it, God. God, you told me, you said, you said, oh, it's right here. You said, my God shall supply all your needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus and you, you ain't done it, God. How am, I, how am I supposed to trust you, God? You, you, ain't, you ain't kept your kept promise. I don't know why God struck me dead right, right there. Well, sir, when we got down to the, the very bottom of nothing, and I just <coughs> mad with God. That dragon, he's a, he was packing it down. And we got down there, and, and God said, Buddy, I want you to go to, go to town. And I, I done just like, like we do. God, God tells us something, and I say, what I want, how, how come I don't want to go, go to town? We're always asking God, why? How, how come? Like like a phobia uh, uh. What I wanna go to town for? Go to go to town, but well I got the horse all saddled up, I about cut him in two the thin gentleman. Now I'm riding up town. I don't know what I'm going to town for, I ain't got no money, money, I can't buy nothing. I'm just gonna see mess I can't see but can't game buy. 
I got into town there, in the old western town. I, I tied, tied the horse up there on the hitching post there, and, and the, 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 the front porch of the Thor was like the sidewalk, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It had the roof coming down there, and and I got up there, and I, and I go, and I'm just kind of leaning up there. Look at that God! Look at that God! There, there goes a whole wagon load of feet. I could, I could give that to my stock and look, look that fellow's got it, and I ain't got it. Look at that God! God, look at, look, look at that God. There goes a wagon load. Look, he, he got flour and sugar, got co coffee in there. God, he got, he got, got corn in there. Look at our God. God, you look at that. There, there's a whole boat of cal calico fabric in the winter there. And my, my wife, Miss Sally, she needs a dress of bad and, and she ain't got it. And look at that. God, God, would you, God, you told me you're going to take care of me and you ain't, you, you ain't done it. I'm mad. I'm mad with God. You get mad with God, you get mad with everybody else. I was laying up there and folks come by. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey. About bite their head off. Pretty soon a drunkard come. I mean, he was drunk as a gun. He come down there. Staggering all over the place. And I, I done just like all of us when, when things ain't going so hot, hot in our life, we, we say, well, I ain't bad as him. And I say, I ain't bad as that old drunkard over there. I, I might not be trusting God. I might, I might have called God a liar, but I ain't no drunkard. Like, like, I, I'm better than him. Like old drunkard, he come right up to me. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Blowing old whiskey breath in my face. We gonna stand behind you now, buddy. I'm thinking I wish you'd stand way behind me. <laughs> he went on, but God death over that old drunkard. Dog. He turned right around. That old drunkard, he turned right around. He come right in my face. He said, buddy, we gonna stand behind you now. I'll buy about a, I want to knock him down. And that old drunkard. Then that old drunkard reached down in his pocket and he pulled up. That old drunkard reached down in his pocket and he pulled out a handful of silver dollars. And he put them in my hand. You don't God Almighty make you feel about like, like, like that. You let him take somebody you, you think you're better than meet your needs. God said, Betty, I, 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 I use Balaam's jackass. I, I'm sure I'm sure you use you. I got what I needed to feed my family and take care of my stock. Ask God to forgive me. Come on in there and he plied up that old hard ground. He plied up that old hard ground. He killed him, dragon. It's right here. The grace growed up again. The reason to rush the highway to be there to be called a way of holding the unclean. You not, not pass over, but it is to be for those that the wayfaring men, the fools are not are therein. No, no lion to be there, and the ravenous beast, and things was going along pretty good. I was having meetings all around, but I had, had a lion, too. Bible, Bible tells us Satan goes about like a, like a roaring lion, thinking who, who he may devour. No, I mean, he eat me up. See, I, I, I got, I got, I got, a, I, I got, a, I got a, a temper. Folks talk about losing their temper. I ain't, I ain't never, never, not, not one time have I ever, ever lost my temper. I know right where it is all the time. 
I can get my hand on it in a heartbeat. Sometimes I can get two handfuls of it. Well, I, I, I've, I've, out, I've out plowed with my, my mule, and, and I'm going to plow five more rows, and the mule, he's going to go back to the farm. Well, he just stopped. Just stopped right there. Well, I went up there, I had a little talk with the mule. And I snapped his head down and said, we're going to plow them five more rows now. Well, I had to get out that mule's attention. He said he just laid his ear down right back, got his old eyes wide out like that, put his head back. Yep. I had to get that mule's attention. Now I'm gonna tell y'all how how to get a mule's attention. Folks talking about hit him with a two by four. That that don't get his attention. That just makes his head hurt. You don't, you want to get a, a mule's attention? You get your finger like that and you pitch him in the nostril just hard as you can pitch him. I mean that mule here, he'll figure some mine right now. <laughs> I mean, he knows right where y'all. You kicked that mule right there, and I mean, he pay you the mind. I said, we're going to plow them five more roads now. He kicked me right there. <laughs> Knocked me down. I got up there. I got my arm loaded. Temper. I reached up there. I smacked that mule head down. I tricked him in the knot. I reached up there. I grabbed that mule by the ear. I bent his head down. And I went, Arr! Just like he ran up. Both of them kicked me both of them right like that. Took off cut the field, tear the field, all the pieces of that, the rain and the plow, everything right there. I was getting up, had to I'd pick a mule hair out of my teeth like that. Uh, I'd, I'd probably have a rifle, I'd kill him dead. I'd, I'm gonna get my satisfaction out of you! <laughs> Buddy. Old Satan come up there. Buddy. Buddy, what you gonna preach about on Sunday? Buddy, you gonna preach from from the book of James where it says you supposed to be slow to wrath? That what you gonna preach about? I know what you gonna preach about, but buddy, you gonna preach from from the book of Proverbs where where it says says the wise man is kind to his animals. That what you gonna preach about? <laughs> I mean, Satan eat me up. Bible says man can't can't control his temper like a city without walls. And I mean, he just come in and, and took care of me whenever he felt like. That old mule, he just doing what mules do. Here I was biting him in the ear. Well, I had to get down there on my knees in the middle of my field and confess my sin. The old Satan like a roaring lion. I mean, the old Satan, he eat me up. I had to say, God, you you take my temper. I don't want my temper no more. God, you you take hold of it. And bless God, he did. Now, I tried to get it back from him a few times now. I'm going to tell you that. But, but bless God, he's got a better hold of it than I got. So God wants you to get rid of that old thing. God coming there and he killed that lion. But I have some ravenous beasts too. I have some ravenous beasts. I'll tell you this story and we'll, we'll be done for now. I had some ravenous beef in, in my life. I, I, I was preaching, and I, I was out in, out in California out there. We were having a meeting out there. And I was preaching out there, and, 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 and I had a burden on my heart for them folks. And I got a burden on, on my heart for y'all. Preaching, I've been talking about this meeting for a long time. I've been praying about it. Then. I ain't lying to you about that. I've been praying for y'all. I want God to do the work in your heart tonight. And I had a burden on my heart for them folks. And I said, God, you help me now and help them. And, and I've been praying for y'all. And, and I, I've been doing that. And, and, and I got done preaching. And, and there's another fellow. And I, I went up to him. I said, I, I'm going to go pray for these folks here. You, you, you preach next. And, and he said, all right. And, and I, I, I went off the platform there. And, 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 and I went out on the sidewalk there. And, and this was out in San Francisco, California, out there, and they got them street cars out there. Well, where I come from, we just hardly got streets, you know, out there in Texas. Well, sir, I step off there, and here come one of them street cars, ringing that bell, go about 90 miles an hour, you know. Well, I got some sense, I got out of the way. Model T Ford coming down this way, ramming down. Pow! Just bam! Like that. Front tire, back tire, them old skinny tires, you know, Model T got. Most getting rammed down. They stopped the car. After they hit me, they stopped the car. 
Well, I thought I was laid out there, and and, and they they come out there, and and they're looking at. They had been at the meeting. They had. They just heard her <laughs> preach. Somebody starts leaving your meeting early, preacher. You better look both ways. I'm gonna tell you that right now. But then had they been at the meeting, and they, and they see me lay down, and the woman come out here and said, "Oh, Uncle Buddy, I am so sorry you are dead." <laughs> I said, "I'm not dead." <laughs> and her husband he goes, mm. so, "Uncle Buddy, if I'd have known it was you, I never would have killed you." And I said, "If I'm not dead." And I, I won't, but I was getting that way. I'm going to tell you that right now. Well, they got a hold of them folks there that, that, that drive them ambulance things, and, and about 35, 40 years they got there. I know, I know to get there fast as they can, but, but I'm here to tell you, when it's you laying down there, it ain't never fast enough. Well, so they got there, and, and they, they had to pick up Mama clothes because they want nothing else that it wouldn't come off, and they grab up my, my, my coat and my pants leg there, and they throw me down on the stretcher. And slammed it in the back of that ambulance there, and it hit every bump between there and the hospital. <laughs> them old rickety wheel they had there, and them old skinny wheel. Here they go, blam, blam it along there, and got me in there, threw me down on a, a some something there, and in, in the room there, and and they left me. They were gonna leave me there to, to die. Well, Mister Godby, he's the other preacher. He got hold of a doc. He said, Doc, you got to come help this fella. He's a preacher. He said, Well, I can't help that. <laughs> And, and he said, well, it's Buddy Robinson. He said, I know I can't help that. But he started asking me a question about this, that, and, and, and uh, here I was. I won't dare, but I was getting that way. Now, I ain't lying to you about that. And he's asking me a question. But anyhow, he, he, he said, well, maybe you got a chance. And they took me in the operating room there, and, and I, I broke up bad. I broke up bad. My arm was broke here and here. This arm was broke over here. My, my, my ankle, they was crushed about right flat, just, just like that. And my kneecap, it was all turned around here somewhere. Go back in there. My rib cage all stove in over here. I, I broke up back. Well, I was in the operating room for 12 hours. Put me all back together. When I, when I come to, uh, they had plaster everywhere. And old Doc here down there. I, I've done a pretty good job on you. I said, you, you had some help. He said, what are you talking about? I said, Doc, the, the great physician looking after me. He said, I don't, I don't want to hear it. And he had that, and I, I couldn't talk real loud, but I said, Doc, Doc, I love you, and, and Jesus Christ loved you too. He, he died to save you. He said, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> every day he comes see me, every day I told him the same thing. Doc! Doc, I love you. Jesus Christ love you too. He died to save you every day. I don't want to do it. But he did it. But while I was in the hospital, I had some ravenous beef. You know what I'm talking about ravenous beef? It means mean they're hungry. And they come in your life and they take a little bite here and a little bite there and they eat you up from the inside out. And, and, and I was laying in there. I was in the hospital for three months. And you, you get, you, 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 some of you, you've been to the hospital, you know what I'm talking about. Folks come see you, and they're going to cheer you up, and to see how bad off you are, and you got to cheer them up. You know what I'm talking about? And you, you give out, and you give out till you just give out. And I'll give out. And when you give out, that's when Satan comes, see? And I'll give out, them little ravenous beasts come in there, they little bite here, little bite there. Buddy, buddy, God don't care about you. They come in there, buddy, who give you nothing now, buddy? Buddy, you ain't, you ain't got no meetings coming in. You ain't got no offerings. Ain't nobody paying your hospital bill. Buddy, ain't, ain't nobody taking care of your, your ranch out there, there and take Buddy, God don't care about you no more. And after a while, you start listening. Now, after a while after that, you start believing. And pretty soon, they eat you up. Old folks come see me. I know what to say. I know all the verses that was right here. I can tell them everything. But in here, it's about empty. About empty. Well, it got time for me to get out of there, and I was about bitter with God as I've ever been. And this little old nurse would come in there, and they were going to put me in the wheelchair and take me on out there. She was rolling me along there, and she had a handkerchief, pretty little old lace handkerchief, all, just pretty little thing, just all tied up, and she put that down in my lap. What's that? I just snapped at it. What's that? About made her cry. 
He said, Uncle Buddy, it's money. Well, you put down my, my hospital bill. I know that big one. You just put on, I don't even want to know. You just put on there. And she said, Buddy, Buddy, your hospital bill's all paid. So this one's left over. But buddy, folks from all, all over the country does put money in them. Come in that hospital. I whole book out. And I, I reckon I might have had about ten dollars in my name. That won't no way I was gonna take care of that. And the father who's in heaven, he took care of it. Cause I'm good? No. <laughs> the ravenous beast eat me up. Even when when we ain't faithful here, he's faithful to us. He'd give to you, press down, shake it together, running over. I said, God, forgive me. I ain't ever, ever gonna learn. I confess my sin. I looked up in that old dock. He was standing way on out in the back, getting ready to go out the door. And I said, Doc! Doc! Doc, I, I love you. Jesus Christ loves you too. He, he died to save you. I, I know, buddy, because I asked him in my heart last night. That old doc got saved. It's right here. Verse 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to thine with thongs and everlasting joy upon their head. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and thine shall flee away. I was ransom of the Lord. He, he bought me. But I'd gone away. And he said, Come on, buddy, come on back to thine. <laughs> Every time I'd gone away, Jesus Christ said, Come on, buddy. <laughs> Every time the grace gets all pressed down by the dragon, every time the lion turns you all the people, every time them ravenous beasts eat you up and from the inside out, there's just, there's just a little bite here, a little bite there. Every time Jesus Christ come in there and he said, Come on, buddy. Every time the desert gets in there. Jesus Christ come in there and he lets the water run sweet and clear for your life. He lets the grace grow up with reeds and rushes. That they'll blossom abundantly, rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Some of you spent a long time since the water, the word of God ran sweet and clear for your life. Some of you, you, you just been playing church. You just come on here because you think that's supposed to do. You ain't got nothing else to do. Some of you just come on here because you think, well, somebody's going to think something bad about you. I'm going to tell you something. What's Jesus think about? Some of you, them dragons, have packed it down and packed it down and packed it down so hard in your life. It's just a wilderness in your heart. God wants the water to break out again. Let the streams in the desert, the parts of grandma come up full of thirsty land, springs of water. If you just let it. Some of you are fighting God so hard you can't stand it no more. But well, don't. Don't, don't stand it no more. He says, come on. Come on. 
Some of them have been a long time since you had joy and gladness in your heart. The heart's all full of sorrow and sign. Heart's all, all eat up with ravenous feet. The lion got you. The dragon. They got me. I know what I'm talking about because they got me too. But I know what I'm talking about because Jesus said, come on. Come on. Maybe not. I, I don't know your heart. God knows it. Maybe you ain't never asked Jesus Christ in your heart. Maybe you just lost it. I was about there 18 years old. Maybe somebody saying to you, you too bad to be saved. <laughs> Ain't nobody too bad. Maybe tonight you got something you need to get straight before God. Maybe tonight you, you, you need to say, God, what you want me to do. I don't know. Preacher's going to come up here and we're going to have an altar call. That's up to him. But I know what the Bible says. And the ransom of the Lord that return and come to thine with thongs and everlasting joy upon her head. Some of you need to come on to thine tonight. You just come on. Preacher, come on.